Come on, guys. Well, it is a gray, gloomy, yuck, depressing first day of spring 2023. It is Tuesday, March 21st. Spring has sprung in the great state of Texas here on this gloomy day, and uh, I'm supposed to be out shoveling some 18-wheeler size pile of wood chips right now, but uh, looks like I've been rained out of that, so I'm sitting here with my thumb up my ass, basically, uh, deciding what the fuck am I going to do with the rest of my day, I, and then I need to be grilling some stuff, but uh, all of the kindling to get the coals going is soaking wet, so I guess that's not on my list of things to do, so I'm just going to sit around here and whine about just thinking, I'm just your old doomer, your old depressed collapsitarian, just thinking back over the last week of, you know, partying with all of my uh, <clears throat> lovable, clueless friends at the biggest party of the year, the South by Southwest Music Festival, where, you know, in the last week, I have spent more time socializing, you know, out there having social intercourse with my fellow humans, <clears throat> including, you know, my clueless, lovable friends here in Austin, Texas. I have spent more time in the past week hanging out with other humans than I have in the previous year or that I will spend probably in the next year. And uh, <laughs> just thinking about the whole idea of my fellow humans and hanging out with people I love and Just thinking, just think, just trying to make sense of it all. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, the one thing, well, not the one thing, one of many things that strikes me, as I mentioned over there in my rant on that other channel today, you know, whenever I hear someone down in the Doomosphere talking about this mythical conversation that the planet is supposedly having uh, about the state of the planet, which, you know, usually means, I think, climate change, since when people are being honest about the state of the planet, that 90% of that conversation is over climate change, never mentioning all of the rest of the reasons that were, that were doomed. But all of this, you know, I was reading some, some bullshit today where this uh, apocalyptimist it, talking about the conversation. Well, guys, <clears throat> I just spent a week in the company of hundreds, if not thousands, uh, of people, you, you know, from close friends to total strangers, to all of these, you know, these publicly touring uh, music acts. Uh, let me tell you how many minutes of conversation did I hear last week about anything having to do with anything that is going on on this planet. Total. If your answer is zero minutes, give yourself a gold star. Uh, the, the entire subject of the state of this planet is nowhere, nowhere uh, that, that, that I can find. Okay, one of my buddies made one comment about that bank going south. <clears throat> He made one comment, there were probably five or six of us going, uh, uh, 
standing around a table eating a thing of Kentucky Fried Chicken, and uh, he brought up this this bank, whatever you call that, not exactly a foreclosure, failure, whatever, and uh, said, "I'm not." He goes, "I'm not saying this will be the trigger, uh, you know, to the shit show, uh, but I." I'm just saying it's a possibility, and he put it out there and was met with this deafening silence. So he looks over at me, uh, he looks over at me <clears throat> for some support, and, 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 <laughs> and I just kind of laughed. I, I, I said, you know who you're talking to when, when you're talking to me, brother, where I put the uh, failure of this bank. Uh, and, and, and that was the extent of the conversation. And then the other, I don't know, four or five people standing there completely let his comment drop like a lead balloon and uh, never, and just went on talking about whatever uh, people talk about. Uh, so that was it. That was the extent of that conversation. And, and you, you think maybe, I don't know how many bands that I heard, how many hundreds of songs that, uh, that I heard, not one mention anywhere by any, you know, people who have audiences in front of them, uh, not, not one song about what is going on on the state of the planet. Oh, God. And so it's just, uh, you know, just started your old doomer just thinking about just the absolute hopelessness uh, of it all. That, that if you're a doomer and, and you and you want to have friends, you just have to understand that unless you, you, you know what I'm saying, you, 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 you choose your new friends from down here in this rabbit hole, that you're just pretty much going to spend the rest of your life uh, hanging out with people uh, who either have no clue about what's going on on the planet or not uh, having having any interest in the subject they don't want to they don't want to talk about it they don't want to hear about it so you're just basically going to have to make the decision do you want to be alone for the rest of your life I don't know, maybe down here in social media, uh, on, you know, on YouTube or medium.com or whatever, you know, preaching to the choir, to your little imaginary friends scattered around cyberspace. Uh, if, if that's your definition of, uh, of, of, of having friends, then uh, more power to you, but I mean, it, you know what I'm saying, it, if you want for the rest of your life to, if, if for whatever reason, and I don't know what the reason is that you value the company of your fellow humans, that you're, you're basically just going to have to think of something other to talk about. Uh, and, and just never bring up the subject. Never bring up the subject of how fucked we are. Now, now I did have one of my buddies come. He was out here in the neighborhood, so he stopped by to visit. He was most. He was more visiting my friend here uh, than he. I mean, he never would have come out here to visit me. He was out here visiting her, and I just happened to be sitting around here, and he is a, uh, you know, a really nice guy. This, this is just one example. He, he's a really nice guy. Uh, has plenty of friends. He is definitely what I would call a lefty. He is a lefty, 
and so <laughs> we were, he was quite a long visit. Uh, I, I know that I really make this guy nervous. People have reported to me that this guy, uh, ha, you, you know, is talked about being concerned about uh, Hambone's little rabbit hole and whatnot. So it was nice to have a conversation with him. And so uh, I, I was just kind of playing around with him, you know, trying to get him to voice an opinion about something, about something other than, you know, like basically gossiping about our little circle of friends, which is the vast majority, uh, I guess, of, of, of what, when you get a circle of friends, what you talk about is your circle of friends. And uh, so that was the conversation, talking about our circle of friends, mainly about how fucked, uh, you know, all of the, as we're getting older, all of these different health afflictions that all of us, takes up an unbelievable amount of time, is just updating each other about the latest uh, calamity. You know, I'm just talking physical health calamity takes up uh, the older you get the more of that and so finally <clears throat> you know I, I, again I, I was just kind of yanking his chain and I'm saying well Billy Bob uh, you know knowing that he's a lefty but somehow even though I know he is a hardcore lefty I, I figured that he did not agree with the quote lefty position on capital punishment. So I just asked him outright, Billy Bob, what is your opinion on capital punishment? And and, and I mean he so he just started fidgeting and whatnot and I uh, he so I'm waiting for an answer. I mean he didn't know my opinion. Uh, on capital. I've never discussed the uh, issue of capital punishment with him. And uh, so he's, he goes, well, you know, hemming and hawing, he, he goes, he, he goes, I generally support capital punishment. I generally support capital punishment, but as soon as it came out of his mouth, he goes, but I would never just come out and say that. And I said, uh, I said, dude, you did just come out and say that that you generally support capital punishment. And then, of course, he was, and I said, don't worry, brother. Uh, I, I, I said, my opinion on capital punishment is that I think we need a hell of a lot more of it uh, on this planet. Uh, you know, so he was already worried that he, had, that he might have just offended me because his opinion was different than mine. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, that's part of it. You know, how much of it, uh, of what you never hear being said is because, it is because people aren't talking about stuff because they are so afraid that their opinion is going to offend somebody else. So they keep their... So they, they 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 keep their mouth shut. I don't know. So I mean, you just what do you default to? You default about gossiping about people in your social group. Uh, but you know, guys. I mean, I I fully admit, uh, I was probably less depressed over, a, you know, obviously for whatever reason when I am in the company of a, you know, a social group, uh, I am less depressed than when I'm sitting here alone with my thumb up my ass. And, uh, you know, just starting to think about heading back to New York for the next six months and all that that entails. And, uh, and just thinking about what it does and does not entail. And, uh, good God.
Yeah. Beware the depressing effects of isolation. Uh. So I'm sitting here, I said, you know, so I'm, I'm, after spending a week, you know, out here with folks, I, I've, I've kind of come up with uh, putting, putting folks into four categories, I guess, <laughs> the basically miserable, the, the, you know, the basically miserable categories without getting into the truly horrible uh, so of course there's level one basic m misery and, and that is people who are alone with no friends and no significant other uh, which I am in that category and, you know I have been in all four of these categories at different points that's probably most of us have that I have been, been in the in these four different categories, and and, and 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 at this point, I'm I'm not talking about being a doomer necessarily, whether whether or not you're a doomer, although your chances of being in the most miserable category, which is having no significant other and no just regular real life pack of friends to run around with. Uh, would, would be class number, would be, we'll call them group number one, which I, uh, which if I'm not in now, I will be shortly. And that's basically uh, just going about your daily life with, with no friend, and, and I do not, sorry guys, I don't count social media I don't count my imaginary friends on in the in cyberspace. When I say running around with my friends, uh, YouTube does not count. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, getting together with I don't know three to twelve friends uh, three to five times a week will not happen again. Uh, if it happens twice in these six months I'm in New York, if I didn't get together with three to twelve real life friends in six months in New York, I will be shocked. So there's that group, uh, which is your chance of being depressed, obviously, is the greatest if you are. Base if you have no significant other in your life, and you you just have no friends to run around with, it's just you know sitting around with your thumb up your ass, uh, thinking how to fill up each day. At least I will have the Airbnb going, you, you know, to take my mind off uh, about sitting around. Uh, alone with my thumb up my ass, I guess I have that to look forward in New York. But other than that, it's it, it's it, it, and and then next year when I'm not in New York, uh, you know what I'm saying, frying pan in the fire, uh, not even factoring in the doomer shit. I, I am pretty much I I see. I see from the time I leave Austin, and, and, and not even from the time I leave, now that South by Southwest is over, I'm going to be around for three more weeks. And I uh, don't know how many, well, I'm going to a folk festival with a bunch of friends this weekend. Uh, you know, so I, once I leave Texas, uh, it, it's just, I can kiss that goodbye. I. I will be spending uh, at least the next six months basically sitting around alone with my thumb up my ass, eating alone, obviously sleeping alone, going to sleep alone, waking up alone. So there's that group. 
And, and this is the group that I see myself being in for the majority of the rest of my life is in the, you, you know, is in the basically lonely, depressed, uh, just, uh, just sitting around talking to my imaginary friends on YouTube. So then, of course, there's people like my buddy who came to visit here. Now, he does not have a significant other, but he does have plenty of friends. Uh, he could, uh, without trying very hard, as I could, living in Austin, Texas, that uh, three to five times a week that he could uh, get together with three to twelve of his friends at some sort of social gathering in, uh, in, in South Austin, Texas. So he has some escape from not having the significant other. Uh, but, I mean, I've known this fellow for years, and, is, and, and I don't know if he's ever... He w he's divorced from another friend of mine, uh, and, and I'm not sure he ever got over that love affair. Then, of course, uh, there's group number three. Now, I honestly don't know if group number three, I think I'm getting an Amazon delivery here in a, in a minute. Uh, so the group number three, which I have also been in, in my life, is when you do have the significant other. So it's you and your little whatever you want to call them that you have found that one person to share your life with, but then the two of you don't have any friends. Uh, so which is which is worse to uh, to to have your lifelong partner beside you and have no other friends other than that one person or not to have that one person but have three to twelve other people to uh, run around with. So I guess those are about even. Then of course, and I have been in this position, uh, and that's to have both, to have both the significant other and to, uh, so that then the two of you have a social group to run around with and get together with and whatnot, which obviously is the best of the four, and it's the farthest out of reach. I, I cannot imagine that there is absolutely zero evidence that as long as I live that uh, I will have a significant other and a social group. I see very little evidence that I will have either. Uh, that for whatever reason uh, I have made these choices in my life uh, to end up in group number one. The, the totally fucked group. Now, I will say there is a fifth group, okay? I, I do want to, uh, I, I do want to make a point that, you know, being in the basically miserable group that I'm in, that there is a truly horrible group, and that is where you have a significant other in your life, and you realize the person you have chosen to spend the rest of your life with is, you know, some version of a uh, psycho bitch from hell or the male version or whatever, that being in a bad marriage, okay, uh, will catapult you. I will take being in the basically miserable group of having no significant other and no friends over 
be over having my significant other be uh, the spawn of Satan. That will uh, quickly... Uh, Anyway, but since there's no danger of that right now, since there is zero danger of that happening, and at least you usually get a little bit of a honeymoon phase. You know, somewhere between three months and three years, you can expect your, you know, your new significant other uh, to really be your significant other. Uh, but I, I don't even see that. I mean, there is exactly zero evidence that there is one female on this planet. Uh, there, there is nobody remotely on my radar right now. Uh, remotely on my radar. Uh, in, in that, so uh, I guess I will uh, just hang out in the uh, basically miserable group and uh, continue talking to my uh, imaginary friends uh, on YouTube. Uh, it, it, you know, and the irony is not lost on me since I, you know, since I've moved uh, all of the doom and gloom, you know, the shit that I'm not allowed to talk about with my real life lovable friends, since I've taken that conversation away from Humpty Dumpty Tribe and moved it over to Collapse Chronicles, that nobody, that nobody Want, and down here in the Doomosphere wants to hear anything I have to say that is not about doom and gloom and the only thing anybody wants to hear me talk about is doom and gloom. The, the, the very thing I cannot talk about in, in quote real life is the only thing my uh, imaginary little friends on YouTube in the Doomosphere want to hear me talk about. You know, just for the, the ongoing layers of, uh, of irony that I, that my Doom and Gloom channel is about, about six times as popular as uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe, where I just, you know, talk about my life and crazy stories that have happened to me and music I'm going you, you know and uh, travels around with my little dog and stuff that uh, people the only thing that I have of interest for anybody in the doomosphere is doom and gloom and if I'm talking about anything else other than doom and gloom uh, I don't even have any friend, any imaginary little friends on YouTube. So with that, I am going to wrap up this imagine this little chat with my imaginary remaining friends on YouTube uh, because I realize I am talking to myself and get back to uh, sitting here with my thumb up my ass uh, look, staring at the rain. That's it. That's on my mind. Bye guys. Even my dog turning his back on me.